One of the most common questions that I see get asked, I think can be summed up in one of my favorite song lyrics of all time. And that is... Running out of time, running out of time, running out of time. I'm sure we've all felt like that before. You just never have enough time fit in VCE, your UCAT, your job, your relationship, nothing, right? What do you do? Well, that's where I come in. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Yang and I'm a first year medical student at Monash University in Melbourne, Victoria. On my channel, we talk about all things from VC to UCAT, to productivity, to how we can supercharge our study and get twice the marks in half the amount of work. What I want to talk about today might be a bit of a controversial tale, um, and that is the idea of managing our workload between UCAT and VC. Now, to some people, the UCAT is just another school subject. To others, they take it above and beyond and spend more time on the UCAT than the ATAR. So the question is, which way is better? Is there a better way? How can you efficiently fit both in and not sacrifice from out of school extracurricular activities such as sports, relationships or work? I think in order to address this issue of being able to balance the UCAT and the VC, we need to first get rid of that notion of this being a balancing act where you have to be able to keep everything up all at once or else you'll be a failure. The crux of this comes down to the fact that people still believe that effort leads to results. And yes, while that is true to some degree, it doesn't mean that a student who's spending 100 hours studying is going to do any better than the student who spent 50 hours studying for the exact same test. And that concept applies to everything, not only to SACs, to exams, but to the UCAT test as well, and to anything where you really have to prepare for it. Instead, the first tip I have for you guys is to make everything outcome-based. Now, what do I mean by that? The idea behind outcome-based learning and outcome-based results is instead of looking at, you know, for example, a maths exercise as purely I'm going to finish, you know, exercise 6L, instead you want to see, um, see it as something where, all right, I'm going to finish chapter 6L, but instead of looking at it as the exercise, I'm going to get these skills that allow me to answer these sort of questions from the study design. And that way we can almost treat it like a checklist where we can go through the study design and really see where our gaps of knowledge are instead of spending our time on exercises where we wouldn't need to do it. It's the same reason why we don't do, uh, you know, times tables worksheets because we simply know them already. So it would be a waste of time for us to spend more time learning our times tables. What am I trying to get out there? Well, I think on a more day to day basis when we're organizing our schedule, this means on Google Calendar, for example, spending more time blocking out areas and being more specific with our task. So for example, instead of saying, I'm just going to work on verbal reasoning today in the UCAT, I might spend more time, for example, uh, focusing on particular sections of verbal reasoning, right? So my true false can't tell skills, and I'm going to be even more specific, right? I might do five sets of verbal reasoning questions, specifically true false can't tell questions, and you know, analyze that and spend my time going through what I went right, where I went wrong, and also setting up benchmarks and um, goals for myself. And that achieves the purpose of being specific with our goals, which makes them a lot more attainable and a lot more visual in terms of the outcome, which is the ultimate goal. Let's have a look at this on a practical purpose. Say, for example, I have a busy week coming up. I have both an integration sack for maths methods for VC, and I also want to spend at least seven hours preparing for the UCAT. That's the first mistake. I've quantified my UCAT practice as with seven hours. Notice there with my maths methods sack, I didn't necessarily say that I had to spend 10 hours preparing for it or five hours preparing it for it. It's more of a mental thing and knowing when I'm up to that stage where I'm ready to move on and start preparing for my other sacks. That's the same idea that we need to adopt with the UCAT. It is not a certain amount of hours that will unlock you the ability to reach a certain section or re uh, reach proficiency within one section, but rather how you feel about the section and how you feel about answering those questions that determines whether you have enough to really stop learning that section and move on to a different section. Now, what does that mean in real life terms? So for example, I personally use Google calendars, right? So in this upcoming week, you can clearly see I have a lot of extracurricular activities and commitments that I have to attend and it's my goal to try and um, block out specific times where I can study for methods and the UCAT and make sure that I'm not sacrificing one for another there. So the first thing that I'm doing is I'm making sure that I'm really specific with my goal. So you can see there, not only am I saying, you know, revise for methods, but more specifically I'm saying attempt questions one to four, my easy questions from methods 2006. Uh, exam one, for example. And I'm also saying things like, you know, verbal reasoning, I'm going to spend five sets doing true, false, can't tell questions under untimed conditions. And then I'm going to spend that time afterwards and review it, review where my mistakes were made, 
and then I'm going to spend five minutes watching this YouTube video, for example, by Karma Medic on how I can improve my VR techniques. And then I'm going to implement that again in another two sets. And by being specific with your goals, again, you can see the outcome is a lot more important and prioritized over the actual amount of time that we spend. Whether that takes an hour, whether that takes an hour and a half, two hours, it doesn't matter as long as I get the desired outcome. And through this, you can almost imagine that we're creating the steps to success. So not only am I still going to reach my eventual goal, I can now see it a lot more clearer because it's not a time-based thing where I need to you know, complete 10, 20 hours before I start seeing improvements. It's I start seeing improvements from the second I start working on my questions and the second I start achieving those goals that I have in mind. Another question that is also commonly asked within how do I fit UCAT with VC is also when do I do my UCAT practice? And the truth is this really depends on the type of person you are. If you're the type of person that can't wake up early, there's no point in you doing questions early in the morning because you'll be groggy, you'll be tired, and you won't want to do any questions. So you have to make sure that when you do do UCAT questions or VC questions, that you're doing it in the same mental alertness as you would if you were under exact exam conditions. That means doing it potentially in the afternoon, doing it during midday, doing it in the early evening, but not super early in the morning or not super late at night. Now, what do I mean by it differs by person? Well, obviously we all have different commitments. Some people work in the mornings, some people work after school, some people work at night. So we really need to see when we can fit it in. Now, in general, with the sizing of the UCAT questions, I advise people to do questions in sets of five. Because sets of five is not too many that you'll start fatiguing, but it's also not too little that you're only doing one question at a time and you're not going to see much benefit out of it. Now, I know this almost coincides with what I said before in terms of being specific and worrying less about the time and more about the outcome, but the idea with doing questions in a smaller size um, is that it still allows you to create those specific targets and those specific outcomes while also quantifying it in a manner that is achievable, if that makes sense. So I guess that leads into my second tip, which is do five groups of sets at a time at a time where you feel refreshed and you're able to apply potentially things like the Pomodoro technique. So that makes sure that we're not getting overworked, we're not getting underworked, and we're just reaching that right level of uh, concentration so that we can see real results. The third question that is most commonly asked that is probably mostly related to, again, how I can fit UCAT and VC in within one year is often, is it too late to start preparing for the UCAT? And the answer to that, I think there's a really good quote that captures this. Um, and I think that is, the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago, the second best time is now. And that absolutely applies to the VC, right? It's absolutely true that the best time to start would have been two months ago, but the second best time to start is now. So if you do plan on applying for medicine or dentistry, which by the way opens up in March, I highly advise you guys to start preparing for that now. And really, it's just to reduce the stress later on. Because truth be told, you could even spend a month or two preparing, but it would just leave you with more stress and more pressure um, come later months in say March, May, June, etc. In terms of planning our, in terms of planning our preparation, again, as I said, on a smaller basis, on a micro level in regards to the week to week and how we prepare our work and what we do, that's fine. I highly recommend you guys sort of plan two weeks ahead of what you're gonna do over the next two weeks, but over an entire scale, this is what I recommend. First things first, we need all five subsections, right? That's one really big thing. Some people always like to focus on one particular strong section and neglect all the other ones. That is not possible. You will not get a good score if you don't focus and get a decent score in at least every single one of the sections, which means that you really have to prioritize where your weaknesses are. Now, what do we know our weaknesses to be if we've never done any questions before? And that is a great point. Well, the way we can find out what our weaknesses are is if we just schedule each section to tackle each of them to notice what our weaknesses are. So for example, if this is my first time preparing for the UCAT, instead of jumping straight in and going straight to do abstract reasoning questions because I hear people find it hard, what would be much better off uh, spent is doing one week, preparing for verbal reasoning, having a go at the questions, developing my techniques that through setting the micro goals, and doing that with each section, so decision making, quantitative reasoning, abstract reasoning, and then finally situational judgment, before I get an overall scope on how I'm going with the entire UCAT. And from there, I can see, okay, maybe I'm lacking a little more in quantitative reasoning, which suggests to me there's a certain things I can improve to my technique to boost my score in that section, for example. Now, it's clear that I want you guys to be really, really specific with your goals. So for example, right, not only am I gonna do quantitative reasoning practice, but I'm gonna start off by doing untimed practice on questions with tables. 
or untimed practice on questions with formulas, for example, kinematics, right? Speed, distance, time. The more specific you are, the easier it is to see what type of questions will be asked, the easier it is to sort of condition yourself, and the easier you can ask questions as well, because instead of asking these general questions like, oh, how can I get better in quantitative reasoning? You can now ask more specific questions like, how do I get a better understanding of probability or ratios, which is a lot more easy to answer and also a lot more easy to learn about as well. Now, I guess my last point to wrap this all up is that you should not need to sacrifice anything for year 12. Even getting a good ATAR and getting a good UCAT is not something that is life or death, okay? So you shouldn't be, I know this is so cliche, but you shouldn't feel the need to stop work, stop sports, stop seeing friends, stop seeing family in order to get a good score. I got my scores, which was a 99.50 ATAR and a 98th percentile UCAT by doing not the minimal work, but not the maximal work either. You have to find that comfortable, uh, that comfortable medium that allows you to maximize your output while minimizing your input in a sense. Now, of course, that is provided that you were working smart and working efficiently. Now, if you guys feel like this video was helpful in any sense, or you feel like you'd be able to get a lot of value from these videos, feel free to subscribe or like this video. Both would help me out heaps, but if not, Thanks guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.